This presentation will review the Georgia Standards of Excellence 3087, which focuses on multiplication and division within 100. 3087 states that students will fluently multiply and divide within 100 using strategies such as the relationship between multiplication and division, as well as the properties of operations. By the end of grade 3, know from memory all products of two one-digit numbers. To learn more about the progression of multiplication, please view Graham Fletcher's video that is linked below this presentation. The standards focus on required fluencies for each grade level. Third grade students focus on learning their multiplication and division facts within 100 with an expectation that they know the products of two one-digit numbers by the end of the year. Fluency with multi-digit multiplication is worked on throughout fourth and fifth grades with an expectation of fluency by the end of fifth grade. As we dive into 3OA7, it is important to address what fluency and from memory means. In this video that is also linked below the presentation, Graham Fletcher explains the difference between knowing from memory versus straight memorization. While memorization may rely on quick recall, time test, and flashcards, from memory focuses on strategies and connections. Students who simply memorize lack the number sense and connections needed to be truly fluent. Fluent is not the same as fast. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics describes procedural fluency as the ability to apply procedures accurately, efficiently, and flexibly, to transfer procedures to different problems and context, to build or modify procedures from other procedures, and to recognize when one strategy or procedure is more appropriate to apply than another. The emphasis is not on speed and time test, which can often lead to math anxiety and superficial understanding. According to the article entitled, Three Steps to Mastering Multiplication Facts, students should progress through phases so that they develop explicit reasoning strategies. Forgotten facts can be regenerated due to strategic thinking and relationships. Students should start off by focusing on foundational facts, such as the twos, fives, and tens. They can then build understanding of zeros, ones, and the squares. All of these facts are considered foundational because they lay the groundwork for derived fact strategies. Derived fact strategies use the foundational facts to help master additional facts. Students can use known facts and then add or subtract a group. Students can double one factor while cutting the other factor in half. Square products can also be used as a known fact as students solve nearby squares. And students can decompose a factor into known facts. The attached article provides additional examples and guidance on how to help students build relationships and use derived facts through purposeful classroom activities and meaningful contexts. Let's take a look at the phases of fact mastery. Phase one focuses on modeling and counting to find the answer. For example, six times four can be represented with six equal groups of four. Phase two encourages students to derive answers by using reasoning strategies based on known facts. For example, when solving six times four, a student can simply double their twos fact. 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24. Students can also decompose 6 times 4 into known facts such as 5 times 4 and 1 times 4. 20 plus 4 equals 24. If students master their 2s, 5s, and 10s, along with the 1s and squares, all other facts can be derived which then leads to the final stage of mastery where students efficiently produce the answers. While it may be tempting to incorporate tricks and riddles, true mastery is developed by students seeing relationships. The nines trick can get an answer, but a visual such as the hundreds chart shows that when multiplying nine times one, the product is just one away from 10. 
9 times 2 is 2 away from a 10. This pattern continues up to 9 times 9. The tens facts can be used as students simply subtract the extra group. Learning multiplication and division facts should be fun and engaging. Tasks and games can help students make the connections which lead to mastery. In the following video, you will see how students use Cuisinaire rods to determine the different factors of a given number. What number are you guys building? Um, 24. 24, okay, and what, are, what is the value of a purple? Um, four. Four, how many groups of four make 24? Six. Okay, and what's the value of the light green? How many of those will you need? To make one ninth, you need three of these. Okay, so how many nines do you have in all? Four nines. So how many light greens will so you need? So I need three, please don't work, six, Whoa, what number did you make? 18. And how did you make it? Um, um, we first missed the ones and we got 18 eight. ones. It says 18 times 1 is 18. What else did you do? We got the threes and we used um, six. Six, six, times groups, three. six times three. Six yeah. groups of three. Yeah. What's the value of a red? Uh, two. two. And how many twos does it take to make 18? Nine. In the next activity, multiplication subitizing cards are used to help students see connections and patterns. Instead of just focusing on isolated facts for students to memorize, the cards foster multiplicative thinking. How many dots are there? Twenty. How do you know? Because eight plus no, eight plus eight equals sixteen plus four equals twenty. What do you have on your card? Nine groups of nine. So how many dots is that? Um, eighty-one. And how do you know? Because nine times ten equals ninety minus one group of nine is eighty-one. The key to helping students master their facts is incorporating a variety of engaging activities throughout the year. Joe Bowler's article on fluency provides great additional insight into research-based activities and why time should not be the focus when learning facts. As students master foundational and derived facts through concrete and representational models, they can then transition to more abstract games and tasks that lead to mastery. In the past, the sticks task, division facts are written on popsicle sticks. Students take turns discarding and adding new sticks until they end up with sticks that all have the same quotient. For additional rigor, activities such as this multiplication chart puzzle can be implemented. Students use logical thinking as they discover the missing factors and products. I know that 6 is a factor of 36, so I can put a 6 in this triangle up here. Okay, if you know that's a 6, what would that be? 6 times what equals 30? Wait, 6? 5. So I can oh, put yeah. a 5 here. Okay, now is there anything else that you can solve using mm -hmm. the clues that you have? Is there I anything know, else that you uh, I know that 5 times 4 is 20, so I can put a 4 right here. Okay. Think of other things. If we've already used a 4, what else? And then if we have 2, so that would have to be a 3, because in, it says 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. 2, 4, 5, but I don't have a 3, so that would be a 3. For additional ideas and resources for developing fluency, please view the videos on the properties of operations, multiplication patterns, as well as the video on the relationship between multiplication and division. These videos can be found at georgiastandards.org. You can also access a variety of targeted tasks from Howard County School System that focus on helping students build fluency through engaging activities. Each activity starts off with a connection to literature. In this example, one student creates seven plates of nine meatballs, while another creates seven plates of ten meatballs. They then compare their products and make conclusions. The connections then lead to continued practice and reinforcement. 
Another great resource that is linked below this presentation are math flip cards, where students use the information on one side of the card to make connections to the derived fact on the other side of the card. For example, when students multiply 4 times 2, they can simply double the 4's fact to solve 8 times 2. And the product of 6 times 10 can be used to solve 6 times 9. Building fluency takes time. Activities should be incorporated throughout the year. Check out Unit 2 in the Georgia Frameworks for even more ideas and tasks.